My name is Taylor and I am a sex educator and consultant for men and in this video I'm going to talk about this book, The Way of the Superior Man by David Dita. It is a spiritual guide to mastering the challenges of women, work, and sexual desire and specifically in this video I'm going to share with you seven of the best ideas around sex from this book. I made a little list of them. It's going to be as short and sweet as it possibly can be. And I want you to know up front that this is not going to be a video about learning some specific techniques to do with your hands or like putting, uh, biting a specific part of a body or anything like that. These are deep, powerful things that can be lifestyle changes for you that are going to dramatically shift how you approach sex and the amount of pleasure you can experience with sex and how people respond to you in the sexual context. So we're looking at major, major changes here. And this book, mm, it's fucking awesome. So let's get into it. I've outlined these different seven ideas based on the titles of the different chapters in this book. So if you have this book, you can look along. And the first, the first awesome idea in this book about sex is that ejaculation should be converted or consciously chosen. This is huge. This is huge for guys because we need to get out of this reactive state in sex and get into more of a proactive experience. And what I mean by that is reacting to whatever's happening and ejaculating versus choosing to ejaculate is a is it's like night and day when it comes to the sexual experience. Like if you're constantly struggling with premature ejaculation, then you're gonna be in your head, it's gonna be really hard to be present, there's probably gonna be some shame involved, and like the subtext of that is that you're gonna walk in the world differently because there's this part of you that is not able to fully show up in the sexual experience in the way that you know that you can show up and there's something blocking you there. So this is, kind of what he's talking about there. Like you should be able to proactively choose when you ejaculate instead of reacting to your partner and ejaculating. And if you struggle with premature ejaculation, you know that it impacts your relationship. Um, so the good news is it's possible to overcome premature ejaculation. I have, I used to struggle with it tremendously and I made an entire course about this. It's helped a bunch of men so far. I could help you if you're interested. And even if you don't take this course, like do your research and know that it is possible to overcome premature ejaculation. So the second part of this is that if you choose not to ejaculate, you can convert it. You can convert that energy instead of letting this energy out through your penis through an ejaculatory orgasm. And instead of going into that refractory period where you lose um, that sort of fire and that sort of passion and that polarity, you can choose to bring that energy up into your entire body and integrate it. Charge up your whole system and then you can keep making love or you can make love again in 10 minutes or five minutes and you don't lose this energy out of your system. And instead you have this, this charge that's in you that you can put into anything in your life. It's, it's really remarkable. I've made a lot more money in my businesses from from utilizing this practice. I've improved my friendships, I've improved my family relationships, all of my loverships have improved, my romantic relationships, like this practice is huge. You know, we have this illusion that our sex lives live in this little isolated box, disconnected from the rest of our life, and that's just not true. How we show up in the sexual experience impacts our entire life. So are you being proactive about your pleasure or are you being reactive? Think about that in the context of your whole life. That is idea number one. Related to that, we're gonna go into idea number two where David Dita says that you should breathe down the front of your body. So, why? And what does that mean? And do I even agree with that? <sighs> the piece that I agree with is about breathing, specifically deep belly breathing. It's so, 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 important. If we're not breathing deeply throughout our day, then we're not going to be in as much of our ease and as much of our power as we can be throughout our life, but especially when we end up in the sexual experience. It's really common for a lot of guys when I get into sex to breathe like, <sighs> oh, like shallow, like that. But what we really need to be doing is <sighs> breathing powerfully into our belly because this activates our entire system and it makes our entire sexual response system more able to experience sexual pleasure everywhere, not just located in our penis. So 
Trick number one to overcoming premature ejaculation is to breathe deeply and breathe into your belly. And <sighs> breathing deeply is just an incredible thing to do anyway. Your breath is one of the most powerful tools that you have with you at any given moment throughout your day. You can shift your consciousness. You can shift your awareness by taking 10 deep breaths. Take just one deep breath with me right now, just for shits and giggles and see what it does to you. If you do that in a sexual experience, it's going to make a huge difference. So idea number three, and he titles this chapter in the book, he calls it ejaculate up your spine. And I would translate this to say, uh, to say differently, learn a new way to have an orgasm that is different from your typical ejaculatory orgasm. Instead, that can spread pleasure throughout your entire body and feel better than an ejaculatory orgasm. You can feel like your arm is coming. No joke. It's remarkable. It's fucking amazing. And this is related to the first two other points. It's all, I mean, all this stuff is tied together, but these first three specifically are intricately linked together. So again, instead of letting out your orgasmic energy through an ejaculation, through different practices, you can move it around your body, like the microcosmic orbit or different visualization practices. And you can, you can have implosive orgasms that are just mind blowing. It can last for minutes on end. It's amazing. So this is some next level shit in this book. And I guarantee you it's possible. I've experienced it. I've helped other guys experience it with their partners. So if you're a non-believer, just, just try to remain open to the idea that this is possible. Um, it's, it's fucking amazing. So moving on to the next category, this next section, and it's on page 130 of the book, it's called own your darkest desires. So we're shifting focus here a little bit. The first three ideas in this book that I'm sharing with you were all about ejaculatory control, orgasmic control, uh, different types of orgasm and breath. This is about an energetic shift in the sexual experience. So think about this. Are you somebody that sort of just like goes with the flow in the sexual experience? Do you, are you, are you kind of passive? Are you kind of reactive to your partner maybe? Or can you embody the space of just like devouring your partner and ravishing them and wanting to lick every part of them and wanting just to fuck them and then get wild and animalistic and just ah, like that fiery, darker energy? Like, is that in you? Can you tap into that in the sexual experience? And if you can't, you got to do some work around that because that a, it feels fucking amazing. And B, when you're able to do that with a partner who is more receptive it's amazing for them for them to experience you ravish them with love with presence with consent it's like it's like drinking i, I don't know nectar of gold or ambrosia or some shit it's amazing it's amazing and if you're able to have that experience with them it's going to create such a charge in your relationship and such powerful polarity that it's just it's going to change how you interact it will promise so another piece of this is owning your fantasies. Like what are your dark fantasies or what are, you know, let's actually, let's separate the word dark from fantasy. What are your fantasies? And can you lean into the edge of discomfort to share your fantasy with your partner? That is a good test and that is a good practice. And it can be scary, really, really scary to share a fantasy with your partner, especially if it's something that you feel vulnerable about or feel edgy about. And I can tell you, there's an awesome book that I recommend. It's called Tell Me What You Want. It's this researcher who looked at all sorts of fantasies from thousands of people and did statistical analysis of them. And it's, it's just awesome. Um, so if you like research-based stuff about fantasy, check out that book. And in the book, he talks about how much of a positive impact playing out fantasies can have on relationships. Like if you do them with intention and communication and presence, then almost across the board, playing out your fantasies with your partner is going to improve your relationship, especially if it's something that's like feels edgy or scary to ask for or to share. So I really encourage you to, to lean into that.
Maybe you want to fuck your partner in the ass. Maybe you want them to pee on you. Maybe you want to have a threesome. Maybe you want to have a foursome. Maybe you want to do role play. Like whatever that is, if it's uncomfortable for you, but you think it would be really fun, talk to them about it. And there are ways to do that. That'll be a whole separate video. But that's part of owning your darkest desires. Like own your sexual desires. This shit's never going to happen if you don't talk about it or ask the question. So, and just one little little final piece, like be prepared to get a no. And that's part of it too. And accepting no gracefully is a really important part of being a human, being a strong human. And I want to close off idea number four with this quote from the book where David says, the way a man penetrates the world should be the same way he penetrates his woman, not merely for personal gain or pleasure, but to magnify love, openness, and depth. It's so, so, so important. So while you are owning your darkness, do so with love and presence and combine those two into a magical experience of the moment. So good. All right, moving on to idea number five. David Dita says, she wants to relax in the demonstration of your direction. So this is all about sexual leadership. And I talked earlier about this briefly, but think about this. Are you somebody in the sexual experience who takes the lead, who takes charge with confidence, or are you somebody who follows? Do you prefer when your partner takes charge? And yes, there are different types of sexual interactions you can have. You can have interactions where one person is leading, say you're leading and your partner is receiving or vice versa. You can even have experiences where it's not really clear who's leading or following. You can just, you know, merge together in the experience of the moment. But if you can't get into the space of leadership, then you got to do some work around that. Because to speak to this a little bit more, when you own your role in sexual leadership and you create spaciousness for your partner to experience your fullness, you're allowing them to relax completely. Like if your partner doesn't have to worry about what to do, if you create a scenario for them where they can just receive and respond, then that is a fun and safe place for them to be and it allows them to get out of their head because they don't have to think about what they should do. They can just respond and be in the dance of sex. So some ideas about how to do this. Create a scenario for your partner. Create a date evening and guide them through a set of experiences. And they don't all have to be sexual. Maybe one of them is a back massage. Maybe one of them is more sensual. Maybe you blindfold your partner and take them to the bed and then touch them in different ways that feel good to them. Something where you're creating an experience for your partner will begin this process of, of reinforcing your ability to step into your sexual leadership. Another way is to tell your partner what you're gonna do to them and then do it. That is a fun and super sexy way to build polarity. So you could say to your partner, baby, I'm going to tie you up tonight and fuck you in a way that you haven't been fucked in a long time. And then do that. Doesn't matter if it's two hours later or eight hours later, but the speaking to the thing you're gonna do and then following through, Mm, it's good, and it's part of the sexual leadership role. So another, one of the best ideas in this book is to use your words, and David Dita, he says it in the words, praise her. So if your partner is a woman, generally speaking, very, very, very generally speaking, uh, women respond really well to verbal compliments, verbal affirmations. So. <laughs> the irony of this is a lot of guys feel really uncomfortable with using their words. So for example, if you love the way your partner smells in a sexual experience, tell them. If you love the way your partner's pussy smells, tell them. Baby, I love how your pussy smells. It turns me on so much. Or I love the feel of your hair in my hands. Or I love how you move your hips. Or I love your eyes when you look at me like that. Anything like that, just try it and see what happens. Don't make shit up. I mean, it's gotta be authentic, you know, um, but, but try it and see how your partner responds. I can almost guarantee that they will respond well to it if it's spoken with authentic love and presence and attraction and desire. It's gonna light them up. 
All right, the last idea that I wanna share with you, and this is super, super important. He says, stay with her intensity to a point. So what does this mean? This means to me, like when, I'll speak from my own experience, when I started going into these deeper energetic experiences of sex that was beyond just basic level sex of fucking, um, stuff came up, right? Emotions came up, vulnerability came up, feelings came up, fear came up, all kinds of things came up. And this can come up in your partner and this can come up in you. And so staying with her, staying with her intensity, to me that means like if something comes up for your partner, how can you hold them in that, in that experience without reacting to it and without backing away? For example, what if your partner starts to cry in sex? That doesn't necessarily mean sex has to stop. And it's important to check in, obviously, if they haven't had that experience before and just say, hey, are you okay? Do you want me to stop? Do you want me to keep going? Sometimes they might say, keep going. And sometimes crying is just a manifestation of energy in the moment. It doesn't have anything to do with you doing anything wrong or them hurting. It can be an emotional release. And crying is like the mortal fear for a lot of men. And that's really a big problem. We got to get over that. Um, so this is part of that. So you, if your partner starts to cry in sex, stay with them, breathe with them, because there's nothing sexier for somebody who's in that experience than to have their partner stay with them and hold them and continue to love them through that because that will probably shift into something else. Maybe that'll shift into laughing or orgasms or whatever. And sometimes anger can even come up in sex and that's all right. Like your partner can just roar or like, like really go for it. You know, sex doesn't always look pretty like it does in porn when you're in real life with somebody. Like sometimes women just need to embody that wild, like fierce killer energy themselves. And if you can stay with her present in that moment, that is fucking awesome. And so to a point, let's clarify, um, let's clarify what that means to a point. Like if your partner is starting to get into the space of disconnection because they're so, um, there's there so much grief has come up or so much anger has come up and then that's that's when it's okay and that's when it's a good idea to pause and have a longer check in like hey baby I know I noticed that you're starting to uh, I'm not feeling as connected to you right now like what's what's going on are you okay um, that's what I mean to a point. And there's other times, like if your partner is somebody who has sexual trauma in their history, it's possible that they could go into an experience called dissociation. And that might show up in a moment of them, maybe their eyes sort of glaze over and they look off into the distance where it doesn't seem like they're there so much with you. And if you notice that, it's a really important thing to pause and hold them and check in with them and like bring them back and say, hey, are you here? Like you're safe, you know, you're safe with me, you're here right now. Can you, can you say something to me? Like check in, pause and stop. That's super important just to be aware of. And if your partner does have a history of sexual trauma, like it's worth doing research into that. And chances are your partner does because a huge portion of women, unfortunately, have sexual trauma in their past. So stay with your partner stay with their intensity to a point. That is the seventh idea that I want to share with you from this book. And the, the final thing that I want to say about this book in general is that this whole book is a sexual technique. You know, I mentioned in the beginning of this video that our sexuality doesn't just live in our genitals. Our sexuality is our entire body. It's our entire presence. It's how we walk in the world. It's how, it's how we show up in the grocery store. It's whether or not we stay up late watching Netflix or we make sure we get a good night's sleep. It's whether or not we look at porn or instead we get up and do physical exercise to improve our health and to prove how we're showing up in every given moment. Everything you do impacts your sex life and everything in this book will impact your sex life like do you prioritize your life purpose do you prioritize your mission over your relationship like there's there's just so much in here that's incredibly incredibly important and i would love for you to start thinking about your entire life as being sexual not just isolated to your penis not just isolated to your sexual experiences but everything is connected
super, super important to get. And once you start to feel that, you will wonder like, wow, holy shit, how have I been living up until this point not realizing how much my sex life impacts my business or how much my sex life impacts my ability to communicate with people. It's huge and it really matters. All right, brother, thank you for going along the ride on this video. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, shoot me a message on Instagram or leave a comment below and I'll put a link to my Instagram underneath this video too. And if you're interested in that orgasmic mastery course, there's a link beneath this video too, as well as there's a link to a free guide on ejaculation control in the description of this video as well. If you have any requests for videos in the future, please let me know with a comment below. I'd love your input. I'll see you next time. Cheers.